Hello, everyone, and welcome to Armstrong in the Loop podcast. I'm your host, Seth Prentice. Today, I'm joined by our own, own sweet own host, Allison Schuster. Allison, welcome to the show. Hi, Seth. It's good to be here today. I know we're practicing social distancing, so we can't be in person, but it's great to have you joined by Skype, and we can still see your amazing and happy self. <laughs> It's amazing what technology can do. You know, it brings us together, and I think we're rediscovering how to do that and new ways to use it in this time. For sure. So speaking of that, social distancing is in full force, and now might be a great time to help start to break up some cabin pe- cabin fever for those listening. Um, what are some tips or ways to start looking at this to get everyone out moving and Uh, just breaking up the normal routine that we get stuck when we're just sitting at home. Sure. I I think it is really important right now to keep movement as part of your day. Um, And one of the things that I think has become useful for me, you know, in this time, and my family's all home, and I have a very busy household with three kids, and, um, and both my husband and I working from home. And so... I think it's important to try and keep some semblance of a schedule. I mean, it's definitely different. This is a new normal. But when you try to incorporate some sort of schedule, it it makes it more likely that you're going to incorporate a little movement into your day because you can schedule it as part of your day. So in other words, um, you know, bad habits and patterns are just as easy to make and keep as good patterns and good habits. So when we start to incorporate exercise and movement into our day, it becomes a pattern. It becomes a habit. Um, And our body starts to look forward to it. Our mind starts to look forward to it. So, I mean, for example, my my crazy family, um, we've been taking a walk, you know, every day at four o'clock. So, you know, we've all scheduled our day around that. And we've been doing a four mile you know, walk every day at four o'clock. Um, and I think the first couple of days that we did it, we were like, oh, wow, this is, you know, this is good, but will we keep doing it? And as we've made it part of the pattern, part of the day, I think we're now looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's kind of that time when we can get out of the house, right? And be in the fresh air, which I can't emphasize enough. You do need to be outside. You do need to be breathing fresh air. You need to, you need to walk. You need to move. Um, and it gives us something fun as a family because, yeah, there certainly are those moments where you know you are going a little stir crazy and you're all getting on each other's nerves because as much as you love your family, you don't necessarily want to spend every moment with them. So <laughs> you know you've got to find ways to break that up. But it's it, that's a fun way and a really easy way. Um, to incorporate movement in is just taking a walk, make it as simple as that. Um, and if you have the ability to be able to walk around your neighborhood or or even take a longer walk, I live out in the country, so it becomes a little easier to, to make it a little longer. Um, but if you have that chance, I think you should definitely do it. I mean, we, we read all the studies and we talk about this on Om Sweet Om quite a bit. Um, and I know some of my viewers have listened to me preach this even in person in my classes, that every study tells us that exercise boosts our immune system. So if if you're looking for ways to be able to fight off illness, it, it is one of the number one ways you can do that. You've got to boost the immune system um, and doing so is, is part of movement. You've got to be able to move the body. Um, and that's not just not just walking. I mean, walking, that's that's a great way. That's a stress reliever for, I think, all of us. But to add a little more movement, a little more exercise into your day, if you're adding in yoga, of course, I'm going to I'm going to recommend that. Um, but there are other ways and you can do this at home. We get really used to being able to go to the gym, right, being able to have people lead us in a class. But we really have all the tools that we need to do this right in our own homes. I mean, the household items can become weights. You don't need fancy weights. You can use soup cans. Um, you know, you, you can really rediscover what it is to exercise and create a home practice of your own. And, and I've, I've felt that in the past um, week or so, just rediscovering my own home practice. I, I do practice yoga every day at home. Um, but my practice at home, I, I think it definitely become 
um, a little bit routine because I, I use it to lead me to meditation uh, and my meditation practice, I think on a daily basis was a little bit more important to me maybe than the home yoga practice because I was teaching 12 classes a week. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was doing quite a bit of yoga. So it wasn't so much the physical activity that I needed, but uh, the meditation. So I find myself rediscovering my home practice and challenging myself at home in ways that I didn't necessarily before. And and that's just be a function of being home and, and needing more exercise and, and, and really kind of craving that finding ways to do it at home. So, and that means that sometimes you're doing it with the, the kids in the background and the dog jumping on you and, and all of those things. And that's, that's all right. I mean, that's okay. That's all part of it. Um, but if you can find time that's just for you, you know, that you can designate as your own practice and that you can um, maybe be able to shut the door and have a moment to yourself, I think that becomes important as well. But if it is with everybody, then let everybody in and incorporate everybody. My kids do yoga with me. My dog does yoga with me. <laughs> so, I mean, if, 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 that's, if that's what you need to do, then make it fun and make it part of your day. Is there a, like a good set time that, um, length of time, I should say, that you would suggest for people? Maybe it's five minutes and then you build upon that each and every day moving forward just to build a routine uh, to you that feels comfortable. That's something people ask me all the time. They say, okay, um, you know, how much time do I need for it to be effective? You know, <laughs> you know, we're all, we're all looking for, you know, where it needs to be. And really, um, I tell people if you're, if you're starting a home practice, particularly with yoga, but I think this applies to any exercise. Like if you, if you're beginning to run or you're starting a weight training practice or maybe you've got um, a nice Peloton bike at home, right? And you're starting <laughs> that practice. Whatever that you're doing, don't don't set your yourself up for failure. In other words, always set yourself up for success. And you start by doing that in small increments. So maybe it is five minutes a day. Like if, you, if you've never had an exercise program as part of your life, then five minutes a day is going to be challenging. And do that, right? Do that for a week and then say to yourself, okay, now I'm going to do 10 minutes. Now I'm going to do 15. And you can slowly reach that goal rather than saying, okay, I'm going to do this for an hour a day. And the first day you kill yourself. And you're exhausted the second day and your body hurts and you're like, yeah, I think ah, this is not for me, right? My body just doesn't do that, right? And I hear that all the time too from people for yoga poses. They say, ah, my body doesn't bend that way. I can't do that. And I always say, give me six months, right? You, you think in long terms, like, yes, you can touch your toes, but it's not going to be tomorrow. You know, it may be six months from now. And so you set those little goals um, so that you can reach sort of that end goal. So I always tell people really start small, say to yourself, maybe it is, I'm just going to take that walk every day. Then maybe it's like, hmm, you know, maybe I'll try a little yoga. Maybe it'll be, maybe it'll be the pose of the week on Oh Sweet Home, right? Maybe I'll just try one pose each week. Um, and then, and slowly and gradually, uh, work yourself up to whatever your goal is. And everybody can have a different goal in this too. It's okay. You know, there's some of us, yeah, that you know, I love to work out every day. I mean, um, and that's something that I enjoy and something that I love, but that, that doesn't mean that that has to be your goal. Maybe you're like, you know, it'd be great if I could do this three times a week. And I'm going to tell you, that's a whole lot better than doing it none. So any movement that you can get in, I'm going to encourage you to do that. Um, but, you know, the, the same advice holds true. I have people asking me a lot right now about meditation. I've been getting a lot of messages from people saying, how do I calm down? You know, because the news is very stressful, right? And we're all worried. You know, we're worried about our families. We're worried about the country. We're worried, you know, about a lot of different things. And even just dealing with the stress of rearranging your life. Um, you know, working from home, the, the financial burdens maybe of not working, all of those things create a lot of stress and anxiety. And so people are asking me, I'm going to start meditating today. <laughs> and I say, that's, that's awesome. And I'm going to encourage you to do that. I'm going to encourage you to find breathing techniques and I'm going to encourage you to start meditating. But when I teach people to meditate, it's the same thing I just told you about exercising. I always say, we're going to start small, five minutes a day. 
And I want you to do that for six, eight weeks. You know, think long term. And that five minutes a day is really going to help you. You're going to feel better. You're going to feel a little more grounded. Maybe you can feel a little calmer. Don't say to yourself, I'm going to meditate 45 minutes a day. I mean, that's a really long time in meditation. It takes a lot of concentration and takes some practice. Yes, you can get there. Absolutely. But set longer term goals. And I think that has the benefit of, of giving us a lot of success. Um, and also when, when you have sort of uncertain times like we have right now, and we're all feeling like we're just a little bit floating in the air, right? We don't have that sense of being grounded. Setting a long-term goal is really beneficial uh, because it gives us something to reach for, something to look forward to. Uh, when things are constantly changing around you, you have to control what you can control. And one of those things is the patterns and habits that you establish for exercise for your own body, maybe meditation for your own mind, maybe just breathing exercises so that you can calm down when things get stressful. But those are the things that we can control. We can't control world events. Um, you know, we can't control, you know, where a virus goes. You know, we, we don't necessarily have that control. We can do things to help prevent it. Uh, we can follow the guidelines. We're, we're engaging in social distancing. We know some of the things that we need to do. Um, but it's important, too, to set goals for yourself that reach beyond this time. This too shall pass, right? Mm -hmm. So we need to set some goals so that we can reach beyond the now um, and, and set some patterns and habits that will take us there and take us there healthfully. Right. You know, we want to we want to get there and and feel better on the other end. Right. Rather than worse. So I think that's part of what all of this brings us, whether whether it's yoga, um, you know, yoga, meditation, whether it's exercise, whether it's movement. I think all of those things are important for us to set both the short term goal and the long term goal, you know, where we want it to go. For those that are listening and, and you know, there's a lot out there for exercising. But for the meditation and breathing side, is there anywhere that you would suggest people that have never done so that they can try this for the first time? And, and truthfully, they might get hooked by doing this and starting a new program for them that does exceed beyond the now. Oh, absolutely. Um, and, and I think there's there's tons of apps out there that you can use to get you started. Um, of course, I'm going to tell you to, to follow me on Om Sweet Om because I've been putting up some things about that and I, I will continue to. Um, but I think if you can just start with one breathing technique, usually I start with Ujjayi breath, um, which is a very, very easy uh, breath that we use within our yoga classes, but I, I want you to just pick one, you know, again, pick one breathing technique. Um, and then I want you to learn it. And I want you to do it every day, you know, and maybe it's two minutes a day, maybe it's first thing in the morning, right? Because that's how you want to start your day. Maybe it's right before you go to sleep, because you find that you try to go to sleep and your mind is racing and you're thinking about a million things and this helps you calm down. Um, again, everybody's going to be different. So sometimes um, I caution people just because one person, you know, posts and says, this is the way you should do it. Well, you know you best, you know your body best, you know your mind best. So if you say, well, I'm not a morning person, you know, I'm, I'm not going to get up and do this in the morning. Then, then don't. That's okay. Maybe, maybe you're high noon, right? Maybe you're the high noon person that that is gonna, you know, do this at noon. Maybe it is before bed. You find the time that works for you. But then again, set a small increment and then stick to it. Um, and you'll find that once you teach yourself that, like like anything, if you teach yourself a calming breath technique, um, you will use it when you become stressed. So you'll find yourself turning to it that once that stress hits, whether it's work stress, family stress, whatever it is, you'll find yourself turning to it because your body and mind already know it. They know what to do. Uh, and I think that's important is you're just creating. We talk in exercise a lot about muscle memory, right? And with my athletes, we work on developing muscle memory. Well, the mind has that same capability. And... Again, these patterns and habits of how we respond to stress, we can train our body to respond in a more positive way, right? By, by using the breath techniques and, and, and meditation and some of the sort of mind-body things that 
we have to use now and teach the body because they become preventative measures for us as as we go through life, both boosting the immunity and lessening our stress. I mean, uh, this, the body is strongest, right? When we are not stressed, we know that um, stress breaks the body down and it makes you more susceptible for disease. It makes an easy invasion. You want to make a hard invasion, right? You want to make sure that your body is as strong as possible um, so that it is harder uh, for the immune system to break down. No, that is great. Any last words that you might have or tips that we didn't discuss today that uh, might be helpful tools for those at home? I would just say, you know, in this time, I mean, take it as an opportunity, right? Take it as a chance to um, exercise with your family, spend a little more time with your family. We don't often get that chance to kind of step away, you know, from our lives. Uh, think of all the times that we say, oh, geez, if I only had a week off, right? <laughs> if I only had, you know, a little extra time. Well, we've got it. So so don't waste it. Take it as a gift and an opportunity um, to maybe do some of these things that you wished you had more time to do. So if one of those is starting an exercise program and being a little healthier, then, then hallelujah, I'm in. That's awesome. Um, and, and really, too, find ways to create self-care habits and patterns in your own life. Self-care is really important, right? We, we often put everybody else first, right, before us. Um, you know, our kids, our, you know, parents, if we're taking care of elderly parents, um, even our pets, you know, we often put before ourselves. So, so weave a little bit of self-care into your day um, because I think that goes a long way into keeping you healthy. Um, and we all know that if, if we can do that, then we have a community of healthy people. And that's what we need right now. Yeah, that's fantastic. And I can't thank you enough for taking time out of your day to come and talk to the listeners and give some great tips during this time. And hopefully we'll get you back and uh, wish you the best of luck on Om Sweet Om. And we'll provide all the details for your show and upcoming uh, Pose of the Weeks as well. Thanks, Seth. I appreciate it. For Armstrong in the Loop podcast, I'm Seth Prentice, keeping you in the loop. Are you enjoying Armstrong in the Loop podcast? Great news! All past and current episodes are available on popular streaming apps and websites. Search Armstrong in the Loop podcast and subscribe today.